Hey folks, Callan here from Something's Recording, and today we're going to be looking at how to fix a harsh or pokey sounding acoustic guitar. We're going to be tackling a pokey acoustic guitar track here. It's the lead guitar inside of this track. But before we dive in, if you are ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process in its entirety and really start to hone your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without any more of the hassle and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and look at this acoustic guitar. So I'm gonna play you the solo section here for this song. That's where the lead guitar that we're looking at is you can see that's this guy right here, and it looks pretty pokey to begin with, right? It looks pretty attack oriented. Let me play you the track here. You'll hear the acoustic guitar, it's panned off to the left here, and then I will solo it up for you so you can hear it by itself as well. So here's our solo section for this track. <laughs> So you can hear it's pretty pokey sounding. It jumps out quite a bit and it's pretty harsh to listen to, especially with it being panned to one side here. Now this is an older mix here. So this is, this is a finished mix here and this guitar is poking out quite a bit here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna nuke these three plugins that are on here. But, but before we do, let's take a look at what we did here and see where we might've went wrong. Now this boost up top is nice, it gives the guitar some air, but it's also bringing out quite a bit of string attack. And then that's exaggerated by this compressor here. Even though the compressor is as fast as possible, with the release being as fast as possible too, and it being a FET style comp like this, it really exaggerates the attack and that, that pick noise on the guitar here, which gives us that pokey sort of sound. Now there is a multi-band on the end here that's trying to clean up some of that top end, but we probably didn't go far enough with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these three plugins, we're going to nuke them, and we're going to start over here with this acoustic guitar. I'm going to switch to mono, and I'm going to pull in an EQ. Let's see what we can do with our EQ to shape this guitar a little bit better. That's funny, you can hear him breathing there inside the, the guitar. That sounds good. Um, let me pull in a compressor and maybe re instead of reaching for that, that FET style comp, maybe we reach for something else, something a little bit gentler. The tube tech might do us well. Um, I'm looking at that Fairchild too. Let's actually try the 160. The 160 sounds really good on guitar sometimes as well. And we'll go We'll go three to one with this and we'll pull it down and see what we can get with this. We want something that's gonna be smoother. The FET comp is very aggressive and that emphasized our attack. So let's pull this down and see where we end up here. The Fairchild sounds okay. I don't know if it's quick enough for us. Let me pull in this guy here. The The DBX was not doing it for me. It works well on electric guitars sometimes. It, it was doing the same thing there as our FET comp. It was emphasizing that attack. Let's go fastest attack and fastest release here on this. 
and try and set our threshold so we're working in time here. And we're gonna go up to four to one here. We might end up just reaching for the stock compressor. We'll see here in a second. So that right there is the sound we're trying not to emphasize. And that seems to be emphasizing as well. So I'm gonna pull in the stock compressor here, see if we can get our settings tweaked to make this section sit a little bit nicer on the ear here. That there feels better to me. So being able to go all the way up to 0.1 milliseconds here on our compressor really helped to trim that attack back. And I think the look ahead on the digital compressor helps as well. I lengthen the release a little bit so it doesn't let go so fast and make it feel so snappy. We're using a hard knee here. We're doing about 6 dB of compression on that big peak there. That feels good to me. Let's make sure our, our volume's good in and out. Cool, that sounds good. So what we got here, I put the ratio up to four to one, fastest attack, medium, medium fast release here at 60 milliseconds. That's making sure we're not letting go too fast and get, giving us that snappy sound. And our fast attack helps to attack that pokiness coming out of our guitar here. Now, before we do any boosting or anything like that, let's put the multiband in and see where that harshness is coming from. So we're gonna look at our EQ here and see where the bulk of that frequency lies and set our multiband accordingly. So it sounds like we need to set it above 2K. So I'm gonna pull out my de setting and pull this back to 2K. And we're gonna pull that down, see if it starts to tame some of that transient there on the top end. That's feeling okay. Let's compare that to the uh, original processing here and see what we get. So here's our original.
that's definitely feeling better there. Now maybe uh, having more body in it as well will help. So I'm gonna pull that boost off the top end and see where we sit uh, as we tuck this into the mix now. That's feeling much, much better there. So all we did, switch out some of our plugins here. Same kind of style EQ there. Not doing that big cut, so not thinning it out, and then not boosting the top end there. I know we want the air on the acoustic guitar, but we don't want to exaggerate that top end. And by bringing up the high pass just a little bit higher, we get sort of that same sound that we're going for without boosting the top end. Then opting for a digital style compressor here with a look ahead to make sure we can get that really pokey attack before it jumps out in the mix. And then finally, shooting for our multiband here. I think we're a little lower. Yeah. We're down at 2K instead of 2.5K, and we're pulling it down quite a bit more on the multiband to really pull that top end down and control it. The thing with this guitar is, is that you're gonna hear it because of that attack, so we can keep it lower and not boost top end. We have that prominent attack, which helps you hear it in the mix, so we can keep it lower without thinning it out. So we won't hear any of that muddiness in the mid low mid because we'll be able to tuck it back farther in the mix and let us hear it with the attack with that initial transient. We'll throw it back into the mix one more time here and AB the entire uh, guitar here. That is all we need to control a pokey acoustic guitar like this. Just a couple quick adjustments on our EQ, on our compression to make sure we're not emphasizing that attack and using a multiband to tame the top end. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and you can download it below to start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.